Okay, Jay, so let's um, calibrate what the, paper, the candidate would be expected to do. So clinical communication skills, first of all. So the history of the actual incident. And then there was another prior incident that they need to explore. Yes, correct. And is what he, I think he can give his wife's account of that as well, which I suppose is yeah. an additional help. Um, but, you know, in terms of specific things, we should be expecting them to ask, which the, the, the um, patient's not volunteering. So they need to be thinking about, you know, is it a, an arrhythmia? Was there palpitations associated with it? Yeah. Was it a seizure? Yes, you know, has there been yeah. tongue biting? Was there any evidence of seizure activity mm -hmm. incontinence? Mm -hmm. um, you know, post ictal state. Um, and also, then there's this issue of the parents, uh, possible atrial fibrillation. In yes, the in the past he had. And also, did you mention, did you see that he was running to the toilet very often, so he stopped drinking much fluid? So right. That is so also be useful to, explored, to, yeah. to pick that up, so yeah. that may be relevant. Okay. Um, then, so, in, I suppose, what would we fail them for? You know, I think taking the history of the event should be pretty yeah. straightforward. Yeah. You know, if they don't ask about palpitations, or don't explore. Especially the past medical history yeah. and the drug history also. Obviously, there's nothing there at all. No. But, they, you know, they need to explore the other possible diagnoses. Yeah. Rather than just take the history of the event. You are right. Um, as long as the question is, uh, they are thinking in terms of a differential to yes. syncope and seizure disorder. Yeah. And even think about possible stroke, even though yeah. it is unlikely. Yeah. Yeah. You are right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's So we're happy with that. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the examination, they are given some physiological parameters. So. Yeah. That. Uh, the heart um, rates. The heart rates. 80. Eight, the blood pressure is one eighteen over seventy four, so it's mm. slightly on the low side for a, a man of this yeah, age. Yeah. Um, I I've, I've thought the patient was in atrial fibrillation. You are absolutely right. Yeah, yeah, I could appreciate that very clearly. And if they didn't pick it up, then we need to model yeah. them down. Yeah. down. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that would be a fail in the physical examination. Yes, correct. Yeah. And and there was a fairly obvious ejection systolic. Yes, yeah. typically related to the carotid yeah. Yeah. and uh, consistent with the uh, signs of aortic stenosis. Yeah. Or not. yeah. yeah. So they need to they need to get both of those things because they're potentially right. relevant as, um, with yeah. the now neurological examination. I didn't think there was anything to find. Yes, no. When we did, uh, I don't think there was any focal yeah. neurological deficit yeah. at all. But uh, as a candidate, they need to explore those yes. possibilities. Yeah. yeah, tongue. That's the other thing we should. They, I mean, I think they have to be looking for tongue biting. Tongue it's a recent yeah. event. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I think in the earlier communication history taking. Making sure that whether any history of incontinence yes, or not. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, um, so that's um, that covers the physical examination. We're happy with that. The signs we're happy with. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the differential diagnosis, um, you know, it's a syncopal episode. That, yeah. You know, there's nothing really. Yes. You know, have an open yeah. mind, but it's nothing really suggests a seizure. No, no. They could mention that. I suppose. As a plus. Yeah, Poss but possible diagnosis. But sync be until proven otherwise. otherwise and, and some kind of cardiac arrhythmia. Yeah. yeah. So is this phase of ego? Is yeah. it um, you know hypotension related? Is it yeah. um, is aortic stenosis? Yes, that is the most. Um, and an arrhythmia, and obviously we find the atrial fibrillation. Yeah, yeah. So um, so as a differential what, diagnosis, yeah. they'll come up with syncope, vasovagal. And cardiac arrhythmias. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think uh, they have to suggest the aortic stenosis are possible. Possible. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that brings us on to clinical judgment uh, skill E. Um, so you want a resting 12 week ECG, that's crucial. Routine bloods. And I guess then it's a, a decision about further investigations is, you know, prolonged ECG monitoring. Yeah. Tilt table test, I'm not sure. We need to think about other possibilities, blood pressure monitor, perhaps. Mm -hmm. It's got the, the guidance here has got brain imaging. Um, I, maybe because if they are thinking in terms of ep epilepsy yeah, or anything like that, yeah. but they can mention it, we won't mark them down yeah. for that. Yeah. I, personally, I wouldn't mark them down for not, yes, for not, not doing mentioning it. it. You're right, yeah. 
you know yeah, as long as they concentrate on the syncopy yeah, and the investigation yeah, yeah. and of course uh, trans thoracic yeah, echo absolutely yeah. um and then um i guess this feeds into the patient's concerns but is a driving issue that is very crucial here mm. and unless there is a clear diagnosis the candidate patient cannot drive yeah. yep. so we need to make, make sure that yep. the candidate clearly explain to the patient yeah. unless there's yeah. a clear diagnosis so they can they don't i mean obviously they, they're not going to know the dvla guidelines in detail yes but they should know you cannot drive currently until and yeah. and they may want to say well consult the guidelines in terms of the exam yeah and also that the patient needs to inform the dvla is yes correct yeah um so uh, i i think i i would i would fail them if they don't discuss the driving them, especially yeah. because the, yeah. the the patient's going to raise that yeah. as well. and another question the patient concern is that in four months time is going to australia so again it is four months so obviously yeah. we'll have a clear management plan yes. or diagnosis yes. so if the patient didn't have any further symptoms or syncope type episode yeah. obviously they could go but as long as the patient yeah. is addressed clearly yeah and i think you know the patient needs to tell the travel insurance yeah. um about that i guess we're saying it we're not we're, we're fine sorry that um, patients in atrial fibrillation so anticoagulation yes that has to be part of the management plan yeah yeah but we're going to be a bit um anxious about that because the the patients have syncope syncope so yes i think there are falls and injury yeah, that kind of yeah. stuff yeah I don't. I don't think that's entirely straightforward, but I think it's something that they yeah. mentioned. For the maybe future, explore, once um, the ca- cause of the particular incident yeah. has been ruled out, anything has been yeah. ruled out, then maybe for the future management for atrial yeah. fibrillation. Yeah. Yes, correct. Managing patients' concerns, we've addressed some of that. The driving, the yes. travel. Yeah. I guess it's just explaining what they think the diagnosis is. Yes. What's the the next stages? I think that's what will. And also in terms of. If the patient's asking, is this going to happen again? I think they have to be realistic and say, well, we don't know what's causing it. Yeah, yes, that is yeah, yeah. A, a possibility. And skill G, obviously, is just standard. So um, do you think we're happy to I think say we've calibrated? Well, I think I, I think we have a clear idea of yeah. when to mark satisfactory yeah. or unsatisfactory. Yeah. Yeah. And that's very clear here. Okay, good. Well, yeah. let's go on with it then. Thank you.